Now I'm going to do a video on Chocolatey Server because a lot of people out there explain how Chocolatey works but they tend to skip over the infrastructure part of it. So assuming that you know that Chocolatey is a package manager and that basically it's the Windows equivalent of uh, YAML or apt as far as getting packages go, we can dive right into this point. So first of all, we need a Windows machine that is available. So in this case, I happen to have a 2019 just running, although it could just as easily be a 2016. And I'm going to demonstrate that Chocolatey is not installed by using the choco command. So if Chocolatey was installed, the choco command would prompt me or print out at least a list of possible commands afterwards. Since it hasn't done so, we'll assume Chocolatey is not installed. So. I'm going to run the chocolatey install script. Uh, you can find that in the link in the description below, so we're not going to bother to cover the full syntax. Now, I would say that if you're running this on a workstation or anything running with uh, UAC, please make sure you run it as administrator, otherwise you are likely to get errors. So, first of all, we're going to install the chocolatey server. Now, this is done in two parts. Uh, first part is to install the chocolatey server package. Uh, this basically gives you all the necessary components that you'll be running under IIS later. Now it's a relatively straightforward command, it's just choco install and in this case it's going to be uh, the chocolatey uh, server. So in this case I think it's dot server. And that, that's as simple as it is. So we go ahead and that runs. And what it does is it basically creates a folder structure on your C disk. In this case, uh, a tools folder with a chocolatey folder underneath. And you're going to get a couple of prompts during the installation. Don't have any problem with that. We could just use the uh, Y switch at the beginning, which would just say yes to all of this. And if you were setting it up from the beginning, probably best to do that. Um, but anyway, we're effectively doing the installation here and we create those folders on the local system disk during this part of the installation. So next up, we need to install IIS. Now, again, Chocolatey have provided a script that will set up all the IIS for you. Um, and so I'll just put the link in the description and we'll move right along. So what this does is it installs IIS and it configures it and points to that Chocolatey server directory that was created by the previous package. So effectively, you now have your website content and your website installed within two scripts. Um, realistically, this could be one script, but hey, it's two, so I'm not going to argue with them and say that it could be done shorter. It's all fine from my perspective. Now, once the installation is finished, which it should do very quickly on our copy since we're fast forwarding through the video, um, you get to the next point of the installation whereby you could do the configuration changes. So we're going to go into IS first of all and check that the setup has finished successfully and all that we expect to be there is there, including the fact that it will have stopped the default site. So as we can see, we have the pools and we have two sites. We have the default one, which is currently stopped, and we have the chocolatey one. And we can see that the folder structure within chocolatey exists. So if I just quickly check that the pool configuration, so it will also set up the application pools and you can see that the directory is pointing to the local system disk. So we're going to go have a look at that local system disk and as we said before, tools and then chocolatey server, that's the structure underneath. Now, for anyone who knows anything about IIS, you're going to know that there is a file called the web.config within the folder. Now, the web.config is a very important file, uh, particularly in this case because we want to modify that file. Uh, and because when the package arrives by default, it's going to have had certain assumptions made about it. Uh, one of them is going to be things like the username and password, the default one that is set within this web.config, along with the key that will be used for uploading new uh, files into the repository. Again, is stored in the web.config. So as we can see here, we've got uh, chocolatey as the username and rocks as the password, the default. Change it. Or you can remove it, depending on whether you want to have authentication or not for accessing. Um, we're just going to try and find quickly the uh, application key here for uploads. 
I was going to quickly scroll through it. It's not the easiest thing to do without finding the search option, um, but we'll, I'm sure we'll find it in a moment. Either way, uh, like I said, change these to whatever your um, values are that you want to use on your system. Don't keep them as the default because obviously then everybody knows them. So those are the, some of the minor configuration changes. There are a lot more in here that could be changed, but those are the basic ones that you must have. I'd also highly recommend setting up an SSL as you will get a warning later if you do not have an SSL on the server. Um, that will come up later in the video. Don't worry, there is a warning message. Anyway, this now concludes the server side of the installation. So we're going to hop over to our Windows 10 machine and have a look at what it looks like from the client perspective. So from the client side, we're going to quickly run our uh, chocolatey package list. So in this case, that's the choco source list. And we can see that we currently have one, the default one. Now, what we're going to do is just simply add a second repository, in this case, the one that we just created with the server build earlier. Now, it's a straightforward process, and like I said, under normal circumstances, you would have already changed the default username and password. But in this particular case, since we're just doing a demo here, I'm going to leave them as is. So you can see that they're fully listed here and we're going to add the repository. Now you might note that we've got the slash chocolatey folder on the repository. That's something that you do need when you're setting up. Now we're going to attempt to do a quick upload here. Um, I have a package that I created earlier locally on the Windows 10 machine as if I was using it as a package uh, manager. So I've been creating a package for in this case for my um, 7-zip. So what I'm going to do is basically push that package up to my new repository and check that effectively it's working. So in this case it's a chocolatey push. I'm in the same directory as my package so I don't need to specify the package directory itself. I do need to specify where I'm pushing it to and I also need to specify the key which I'm using and again normally this would be your key uh, but I'm using the default one that came with the server. So Again, not best practice, please do change it. Now I'm also getting a notification telling me that, hey, you're not using SSL. So I'm gonna to need to use the force command to get around this. And again, you should realistically be using SSL when you're doing this kind of configuration. Um, even if it's a self-signed certificate, frankly, just anything is better than nothing. But keeping that aside, um, the upload should be relatively straightforward and quick, assuming you haven't made a typo like I have with the IP address. So as you can see, mistakes do happen. And realistically, I should have set this up with the host name, would have been better. Anyway, package is uploaded. Now we're gonna go and check uh, quickly to list the chocolatey repository and see if there is uh, basically that one package that we just uploaded, because there's no other packages uploaded to this repository and even though we've kept the default repository available we're just going to list off uh, my repo so we know where it's coming from and also if we get more than one response then we'd be surprised there we go so there you go setting up a chocolatey server uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did give us a thumbs up if you didn't you know what to do and as always subscribe for more content